Well, hey, we're live here with Cellular Healing TV with the most special guest of all. I had to drag her out of her morning Facebook uh, and bring her here to interview. We've talked a lot about hormones in the last few weeks and even how to raise healthy babies and having babies at home, all of which she's really the expert. Okay. <laughs> so, but uh, this topic of hormones, um, I really, I owe it all to her. She has been my guinea pig and my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she has been my, uh, really, I mean, I, you know, my illness drove me to a level of learning that I, I would have never, ever been able to do. And uh, likewise, I would never have been able to learn really a, about hormones and its connection with toxicity if it weren't for Marilyn. And before I even go to her, I, you know, I, I, I always, I talk about my story frequently. And, and how it was her that brought me through the hardest time of my life. And it was her that was the strength when, you know, I was, you know, questioning God. I was questioning why. And she reminded me that God had purpose, you know, in the whole thing and reminded me that I would be here. I mean, meaning that I would be having a message to bring to the world, you know, and, and that really obviously has happened. And, you know, we both now are dedicated to this message, you know, to this message of really that we know is needed throughout the world. And um, it's a message of healing, it's a message of triumph. And most of you out there probably just know that part of the story, you know, that I did overcome an uncurable illness. And, you know, it was through that hardship that I learned most of the cellular healing and cellular detox that I teach. Uh, and that became the calling through the adversity. And matter of fact, Marilyn and I have a, a, a saying that we love and it's from pain to purpose. And that has been our life. So. I want to share some other, you know, other ends of that. You know, really, I'm going to bring you all the way back to when you and I met um, back in college, right? And that's make it a little silly. So <laughs> guaranteed. Look, I, I, I was into health even back then, right? I, I came from a family that you know we cooked everything at home. I mean, we, you know, it was one of those things. I even knew how to cook just from watching my mother for so long. But um, I went into Marley's apartment and I opened <laughs> up the closet. Now, I always say oodles of noodles and uh, pretzels and peanut butter. Now, I don't know. You always added something else. Salsa. No, okay. There was salsa. Oh, and, and instant potatoes. Instant potatoes. Okay. <laughs> so that was her closet. So I, because I'm, I'm, I did not eat at home. Yeah, I know. I see. That's what I didn't understand. <laughs> I, I didn't know anyone. I never met anyone that never ate at home. And okay. I never ate at home. Yeah. All my, we always went out to dinner. Yeah, so I, I was literally, I, I said, oh, how do you live here? I'm like, how, to me, it was like someone lives there because they have food. And I was one of those guys that if I met you and, you know, even if I just met you, I just kind of meandered and started opening refrigerators. That's he what did, did, everywhere. Yeah, I would get, we would walk up, people, she's like, you're in the refrigerator. I'm like, yeah, I'm just sitting at the house. Because it told me a lot about the person in an Italian family. Hey, what's ours is yours, especially when it came to food. And you know, so I walked in her and started opening closets going like, you know, you don't really live here, do you? Okay. So the point of that story is this. Honestly. I did stock up on those pretzels though. Yeah. And so did you when you started eating them. <laughs> she fucked on those hard pretzels. So anyways, but so when we met, she had these hormone issues, right? She was taking these big horse pills, um, you know, every time it was her period. Uh, I remember her allergies being so bad, she'd be in bed for days with compresses on it. I'm thinking, what? what is this? Well, I, you're fast forwarding to Atlanta. No, uh, yeah. Because okay. uh, I, I didn't have allergies so bad yeah, as right. when we moved south. But I remember that. But the pills, I remember as well. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so the bottom line is severe allergies, severe menstrual cramps, and you know different things going on there. And then she started adopting the way I ate. And you know a lot of that stuff just went away. The pills went away. You know, a lot of the allergies changed, got better. You know, down the road, man, we, you ended up with a, a diagnosis. I mean, Marilyn's tough. You have to understand. A diagnosis? Marilyn's <laughs> I tough. forgot. <laughs> yes. Marilyn's very tough, you know. So, you know, it's a lot of things she just kept going, just like most mothers do. But then they ended up doing a pap smear. Oh. Uh -huh. And it was actually your midwife that did the first one? Yeah, probably. Okay, anyways. Abnormal. Did another one, abnormal, mm -hmm. so it wasn't a fluke. Then you went uh, to a gynecologist. They looked up and they said stage three, one stage before cancer. So you he fast forwarded about seven years. Well, that's where we're okay. going here. Okay. So okay. I, <laughs> if I don't do that, this will be a two-hour show. So when she okay. pulls into the details, okay. I'm going to keep pulling her out. Okay, All right. so I promise. Seven you. years about later, because we had just gotten married, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and it was after was it I think it was after I miscarried, actually, wasn't okay. it? Okay. Right. See the okay. details? She so, has to be so precise. I'm trying okay. to figure it out. All right. All right. I'm putting it, it takes me a while. Let's to go there. to the bottom line. The bottom line is this, you know, one stage before cancer, precancerous cells is basically what they were telling her. And they wanted to do this whole thing, the colposcopy. They did the, do that. Okay, they did do that. They said, <laughs> absolutely, this looks bad. These are bad cells. Then they wanted to go in and do, I guess, take out more, right? And mm -hmm. you chose. No, she said, no way. So you fasted for 10, 13 days. I always 10. say, yeah, I, I think it was a little bit uh, longer. I think it was maybe 12, but anyways. Um, so the bottom line is she just water fasted, by the way. So, you know, we talk about the benefits of beef stock, you know, water fasting is actually some of my early background, you know, where I learned uh, healing uh, animals water fast, you know, obviously without being told when they're I have sick. a doodle on my lap. Just yeah, in case well, you're wondering what the, I'm it's doing the same, down here. It's the same doodle that causes this thing to go back and <laughs> forth and you see things shaking. This is the one. So she's better on her lap. But anyway, so bottom line, she fasted and, you know, tests after that at some time uh, were normal. And of course, that's what they said absolutely wouldn't happen. They thought we were absolutely nuts. However, with that said, we still didn't really go upstream and know why. And that, this is a very big point because most people just stop there. Well, there was other symptoms that started arising. Um, uh, you know, even some other bizarre symptoms. And, and we'll, get, we'll get to that. Well, that I, I'm like, so apparently to tell the story because I know she's going to catch me on the He's all over the place. Because I'm trying to get to something. <laughs> so let me, maybe I should tell this story. Oh, no. Okay, folks. You might as well go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> Pack it in. It's going to be a long morning <laughs> if she's telling the story. But well, go ahead, tell that part. No, of the but the story. point is, I I realized I had lead issues. Quote, Not yet. Quote. Yeah, actually, only because when you were figuring out your problems and you mm -hmm. did the heavy metal test the right way, I just wanted to do it. Whatever he's doing, I want to do. So that was the only reason I did that test, and okay. it was when I, my I agree with when that. my lead results came back. We're going we were back like, many years here, folks. So. We were shocked. <laughs> yeah. Because, oh yeah. And and then I really, because I honestly, I really didn't think I would have had symptoms of lead poisoning, mm -hmm. and my lead was so high that all of a sudden I became an object of interest. <laughs> and, and let's just let's just cut right to the ch chase. I mean, now I'm fast forwarding a lot. We realized it was her mother where she got the the load of the lead which actually, and I've said this in past shows, um, at a certain point, we started seeing things in our kids who were you know, never vaccinated and our children who raised us perfectly. And we started seeing GI symptoms. We said, oh, lead test. All of them had high lead. And um, they got it from her. So that is the number one way. But Marilyn, you know, got it from her mom. She also chewed on her green crib. She always talked I, about it. I remember which doing is that. true. I mean, there is lead in everything. We grew up in the lead generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we allow you to fast forward to where there was a period, a short period of time where she was a vegan. and Pregnancy um, and um, the first, actually, into nursing, into my pregnancy with, oh, Isaac, too. Yeah, okay. Pre both pregnancies, I was a vegan, and I nursed, and I even nursed when I was pregnant with mm -hmm. Isaac. I was nursing Daniel, and then it was after that, when you were right probably around that time when you got sick, it was right before that. I wasn't feeling well. I was getting these, like, taps in my head, and... Um, I, I, like, weird anxiety. It wasn't her. She became, like, this... I, I was really, person. like, preoccupied yeah. with how I felt and I, I mean you know you don't really think about how you feel you just live life and feel mm -hmm. and you know and I kept saying I feel as if I'm not in my body and so that drove us to um, the bookstore because yeah, we back, the internet back then just didn't have what it had today okay? we weren't we're savvy. talking early internet here so yeah I mean we didn't th you know you didn't go to the internet you went to where there's a ton of books in the medical uh, areas and you know that's where I was the fixer mm -hmm. right I'm gonna figure this out yep. you know because it wasn't like you're gonna go take a drug uh, you know that just wasn't who we were uh, and we got on to something we we you definitely touched on all those things yeah yeah right exactly I did and uh, I, I was sniffing down right roads then and but it, it wasn't until my father's dinner that one night it was Easter Easter mm -hmm. there you go and uh, my father said I oh, made this beautiful roast and you have to understand you know the Italian bricklayer ate meat all his life. And, you know, finally she, she ate, ate some meat. And then like the days after that, she was like, 
I, I feel amazing. Yeah, I felt well, completely noticeably different. Yeah. I, I, and I knew, we both knew that, oh my gosh, there's something going on with yeah. whether obviously the B vitamins or something that I wasn't getting and that was also depleted from nursing the kids and being pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so that was it. I started eating meat and that's when I actually learned the meat wasn't the problem. It's what we've done to the meat that was the issue. Because I remember, remember we had read John Robbins' book. Yeah, and, right. That's when we started discovering the differences of grass-fed meat versus not. And, mm -hmm. You know, really and that kind of freaked that book yeah. freaked us out. We stayed away from it from that point on. But then we learned along the way. Yeah, conventional dairy and conventional meat are toxic as heck. But right, you know, understanding that mm -hmm. it's what man has done to both of those things, and they're two of the most healthy foods on the planet when done right. You know, yeah. the way for centuries they should be eaten. But uh, yeah, so we realized, let's let's fast forward one more time. Well, the, it was the meat made her feel better because she was massively methyl depleted. And that's R number five in my five R's. And uh, methylation gets depleted, folks, in any type of stress, physical, chemical, or emotional. The body's reaction is the same. Her lead level was absolutely depleting her methylation. Uh, back then, I there was really no stress. Pregnancy, I would argue, is a... A natural physical stress that could have you know and obviously the need for more for the babies that depleted you plus Your sickness the sickness stressed me out was it before that though at that point no. no yeah so that's what i'm saying so but anyways you know really at that point there was really no other well i mean no but yeah you being sick was extremely stressful yeah, yeah i know too. fast forward though right but, yeah yeah but so, i right yeah that was before so anyways but the bottom line is is that at that point, you know, it was mostly just the uh, the physical and the chemical stress from the lead, and it was depleting your methylation. Now, the problem with that is that when you deplete methylation, that you need to adapt to stress. You know, whether doesn't matter what kind of stress, you take your methyl groups from many places because you need these groups to activate cortisol, uh, which is a stress hormone, to deactivate it, so you're not running high cortisols, which is very damaging and dangerous and throws off insulin, glucose levels, very bad. And, um, and also even to activate adrenaline and other hormones. You know, it's really, meth think of these little carbon and three hydrogens, these methyl groups, as switches that tell your DNA what to do, protects your DNA. It even has a lot to do with glutathione. So when methylation drops, your body's cellular detoxification pathways drop. So a lot of things in the cell, that's why it's one of the main R's. And so many people today have massive methylation. I call it the epidemic within the epidemic of neurotoxins today. And so, you know, methylation was a problem. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about, I think, if you remind me, folks, the MTHFR, because that's so popular right now. And, um, and I, I, I have some issues there, but we'll get there. But anyway, so the bottom line was, is that she became massively methyl depleted. And it was now, she didn't have enough of these little carbon and three hydrogens, because its other job is to get rid of toxic hormones. Uh, so now, you know, we start seeing these other hormone problems. We run a 24 hour hormone test and that shows that she has toxic hormones, toxic estrogen building up. And there's two ways the body gets rid of it at phase one and a phase two detox, right? Well, phase two is really dependent upon these methyl groups that attach to these, hor uh, these toxic hormone metabolites and it gets rid of them. She was devoid. I mean, she had nothing there. Even her phase one, where she wasn't converting these hormones, was disrupted. So the bottom line is, is you can talk a little bit about your mom, but her mom died of cancer. We know that her mom had lead issues, were, you know, growing up in the lead generation. And, you know, a lot of her hormone problems, she never got upstream to it. So tell a little bit about your mom's story. Well, and, and I think I took that test right after my mom died, because she's been gone now about eight years. I think you're right, because obviously we were scared. Yeah, so right. I felt obviously I was on the path of of what had happened to her. So she did. She had breast cancer when she was 50. And then after, you know, removing the lump, radiation, 10 years later, she had uterine cancer. And within two years, she died. And that was, and, and she didn't. She didn't do anything to get to the cause. And, and of course, we tried to encourage her to do that. But that yeah, was... It, it just it just wasn't in my mom's personality, I think. Yeah. Give, and I think honestly, some of that lack of initiation had to do with her lead, you know, which yeah. is which is interesting because it's sad that 
some of the inhibitors emotionally even no doubt become you make excuses for things and I mean not you know you could see patterns like that I can I can relate to them I guess because of watching well, you your know, watching mercury and lead both are known to cause different psychosis and I always saw your mother you know as having a couple different personalities and she was a sweet lady honestly but she would just she had this thing about her that now we're not going to go down that road but you could tell that there were some mental issues you know no doubt looking back of course uh looking back and you know even when i look back at my mom um i think oh my gosh you know it's like i, I if i only knew what i knew now you know my mom uh, had a stroke and ended up with uh dementia you know but if i look back at my mom's life i see these patterns that just show mercury poisoning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, it's like, wow. Yeah, your mom would fly off the handle. Oh and... my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so her mom definitely saw this pattern of lead. My mm -hmm. mom, I see this pattern of mercury, and I'm going, oh God. You know, that's where I inherited my first batch of mercury, you know, yeah. in utero. You know, your first batch of lead in utero. When and then, you know, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that because every pregnancy you kind of had just different or new symptoms. I, yeah, happen. I remember the worst was just after pregnancy. Dan. It was always after. During yeah. pregnancy, you were fine. It was yeah. always after. Yeah. And I think the worst, though, was with Daniel, the mm -hmm. first one. The first one, yes. Yeah. So during pregnancy, you dump, a, a, you know, you get rid of things. I mean, but one of the things is women tap into their bone because it's a great nutrient source. And, you know, there's a lot of demands on the body. So women lose bone during pregnancy, which is normal. But the problem is, is the lead is stored mostly in the bone and it, it was from the time you were a baby and then pregnancy comes and all of a sudden out comes the lead into Daniel um, which you know thank God Daniel caught a lot of that right <laughs> so you're still getting it out we'll talk about that too but um, anyways and then uh, you know afterwards of course you know you're being affected by the lead and by the way autoimmune it, a lot of it started after pregnancy number one you have the physical stressor of the pregnancy oftentimes an emotional stress stressor and then you have the lead coming out of the bone which is the perfect storm of three stressors mm -hmm. and then that's how autoimmune gets triggered uh, and many people are that don't feel well are autoimmune i wrote a great article autoimmune answer you should watch uh or read that article but um so symptoms started then each pregnancy that was kind of a repeat i mean things happen through those pregnancies because you were releasing lead um and then the where was I going with that so then um, the after the pregnancies again certain things would happen come and go and there was just like I said no explanation but we started getting rid of the lead and really that was the only really way that we got her 24-hour uh, hormone test to actually you know get better as the lead came out methylation then she was able to get better without having to keep taking a lot of methylation you still take methylation periodically so do i uh and by the way let, let's have the methylation conversation right now it is in vogue the mthfr snip genotype i'm homozygous what that means folks is i have the worst genes the worst genes for really creating methyl groups so my pathways have been are, you know are genetically weaker if you will that I don't do well. Well, I can take regular folate. And it's said that people with homozygous methylation issues can't. Um, I have no B12 issues. I had, didn't have the issues she had. She has no SNPs on these genes. So she has perfect genes when it comes to her methylation. I guess my point here is this. The stress errors matter more than the genotype. I don't care what genotype you are. That does not make you sick, folks. So I know there's a lot of these things, people looking at their genetic type and saying, oh my gosh, you know, this, this, and I have to do this. Well, we're, I, I've been looking at these genotypes now for several years and going, well, I'm not sure what to do with it anymore because the things they say apply, we're not seeing clinically that they're saying are true. So that many of these people like myself that have homozygous, they can take regular folate. Some can't, some can't. So we just don't have enough research there yet. And I think that's going to continue to advance. But right now, if you have genes, listen, on those genetic tests, I have three of the four most predictable obesity genes, three out of the four. And I sit before you not obese. So prove my point. So I don't know. So I'm, I'm violating all my bad genes. Look, I do know this. I definitely have some genes that, you know, that predispose me to building up heavy metals. That's for sure. And methylation could be obviously a part of that. So there's, there's some reality to it. But 
the body's intelligence figures out a way around these genes. Trust me, it does. Anyway, so here we are, and then we go through the lead. We're getting rid of the lead, and we got her test got better and better and better and better and better over time. Oh my gosh, years. It's still. Years. I mean, I'm still. I still. Yeah, well, I'm going to talk about that because it came back up. But years, right? Oh, we're talking about the metals, not the hormones. Yeah, mm -hmm. the metals. Okay, yep. Yeah, so over years, right, it, it gets better. By the way, lead takes longer to get out of the body than does mercury. And I, I think one of my pet peeves in this area of heavy metals is that oh, I went and they found heavy metals via muscle testing, hair, to, who knows, right? I mean, the, a lot of inaccurate ways. But uh, he put me on a, yeah, no, I detox for that already. <laughs> how, how long did you do that? Oh, a long time. I mean, I, I think three months, you know. Okay, folks, listen. <clears throat> I, great study just last year that uh, that was out 15 years on average to get rid of lead. That's how deep it is in the bone. I could not agree more based on my clinical findings. Uh, that's why my goal, and you know this, is that I don't ever treat anybody. I teach them and coach them the process of how to do this themselves because it takes years. This stuff is deep, just like mercury. It is deep into the nerve tissue. You know, I chelated for four years on and off cycles. And if you haven't read my article, True Cellular Detox, please do. If you haven't read the article on when detox is dangerous, please do. All the 5R articles, and I think this story that we just told is an R5 article, uh, all of which you can find on, on my DR Pompa website. But years to get rid of it. And we did. We, we got it. We got it down, 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 down. And then... Mare hits perimenopause, right? And new symptoms. So, and this was just recently. And I said, gosh, you should run a lead test. Well, let me tell you the symptoms. Um, none of the, the crazies as much, but um, mm -hmm. I just say crazies. Did I just say crazy? Yeah, I'm not okay, crazy. Okay, I know, I know. I, <laughs> I was waiting for the response, but I said none of that. I said none of that. Next episode, we'll talk about his crazies. <laughs> we can talk about it now. I'm not afraid. Yeah. That's marketing. All right, so anyways. <laughs> was, yeah, it was, was. marketing. But anyway, so um, where was I going with that? Yeah. Okay, now they go, okay, the pain. So she starts getting all this pain, and like I did this, I did that, my hips, and then, and you know, I'm saying, no, perimenopause, you're getting these certain hormones that are releasing, and there's expansion going on, and I could tell, you know, nobody wants to hear that, by the way. Yeah, expansion. That's a bad <laughs> that's word. A bad <laughs> that's word. a bad word. I, I couldn't visually visually see expansion. Okay, you know, you know, like what happens when you're pregnant, your hips move out. I'm like, okay, so this means. Yeah. Just the ligaments become lax. Is that a better word? Yes. Like, well, you expansion. did. You started saying ligament laxity. All right, thank you. All right. So the <laughs> ligaments start becoming lax, and then it's like you just have these injuries, re-injuries. So the bottom line is then I'm always upstream. I'm saying, okay, well, why why are these hormones you know, reacting not as normal as they should? So um, we ended up running another lead test. Ah, I was right. Her lead was back up. I'm not nearly where it was before, but back up. I back mean, up was, significantly yeah, from exactly. where it had been oh, for a, quite yeah. a while. Yeah, it quadruple kept at least. Yeah. So I mean, then she started detoxing, and I once again it was like the first cycle. Well, you said, "Oh my gosh, I slept better." It was like mm -hmm. you know noticeably different. Well, I, I mean, I I I haven't quit detoxing. I just hadn't been doing it as regularly, yeah. and I and which I is would, normal. That's the right. way we do it. We encourage people to do it every once in a while. Once you get it down, just but now I'm definitely. Out trying to be more regular on a cycle because mm -hmm. obviously I have to get rid of this stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I just don't want to gloss over that point uh, when, you know, there's been some studies even recently that show that there's these times of life that we get rid of lead and even mercury and um, through puberty is one of them when, you know, uh, girls or boys start to mature, uh, maturing. And obviously, you know, here we are in perimenopause, which was one of them. And then also older age. They're linking the heavy metals, especially lead coming out of the bone, older as we lose bone. Then here comes the lead again and how it was linked to strokes and dementia. Mm. So, you know, this is significant and it shows you how deep rooted these metals are. And, and the same happens for mercury, by the way. We get into different phases of life <clears throat> and the lead comes out. So tell Daniel's story a little bit because. Yeah, so part of, honestly, I mean, m most of you that know me or know us and our story know that Daniel was a ski racer, and um, that's that's in his heart, and unfortunately, when he had gone, he went to school at Sugar Bowl Academy in ninth grade, 
And it was right then after he got there that he, and he, and our kids obviously go through puberty a little late because of the way we fed them. Oh, and, by, by the way, that's a big issue. <laughs> okay. Cause when they're not hitting puberty until 16 or 17, you know, it was my fault. Trust me. <laughs> and there's an emotional trigger for them because you know, they're, they're not equal with their peers. And, and honestly for our kids, it's a couple years. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so Daniel was away at school and he started growing fortunately. And, um, and he was obviously beginning to ski at a different level. And a lot of the pressure from hit just different things, his boots at first, we thought it was his boots, right? It was like the boots are too this, tight. It's this, right. The but, flex is too stiff. Bottom line is he wasn't healing. He wasn't not right. healing. And so unfortunately, you know, he wasn't like he was limping, but the, then that added a, obviously of, um, an emotional stressor mm. for him because he couldn't do what he wanted to do, which made it even more difficult. Right. And finally, he ended up coming home and staying home in April, and they let him finish the year from home. But it was, but he he developed actually compartment syndrome, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> um and and it was really during his understanding because you finally said all of a sudden because we were initially thinking, oh yeah, it's the boots, it's tight, it's this, it's new, it's you know demanding. Eat, you have to eat this. You have to do that. And so then, all of a sudden, one day, Danny was like, "Oh my gosh!" Just like with the, her perimenopause, I right, said, "It's the leg. It's the leg coming back out." And so she ran a test, and it was. So yeah. sure enough, as he began, I think he was a twenty-six again. I'm just like stunned. I mean, you know. And then just like her, as soon as he started the first cycle, it was like a remarkable matter of fact. After a few cycles. It was his body healed it. Well, it it's been two years, and now he tried to ski at Park City, and he and you know it was <clears throat> he couldn't. The same thing would happen. The stress of the 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 growth combined with the demand on the physical body, and he just he kept trying, and it just wasn't working. And now, but he is so dialed in. I mean, it really is his life. I mean, he he is on schedule. He feeds himself incredibly well. No, I mean, he went well. he went into keto ketosis, keto adaptation. And what a tremendous, I mean, he just like gained all this muscle and got super lean. Ah, oh, in like you know? two and, months. <laughs> and it, I mean, obviously he was very consistent with his detox this time. When he was younger, yeah. we literally were waking the kids up at night. Um, I, you know, just unbelievable. I mean, what we, we had to do, yeah, and we were utilizing, you know, you know, true binders and the whole process that I teach. I mean, I had to apply that to every one of my family members. Mm -hmm. I mean, ironically, as a matter of fact, out of every, even the twins, you know, it's like, I mean, it, it's like now Olivia is doing it and she's off in Spain and she is detoxing because and that's a whole nother well, her story. Mom, her mom was RH negative. And she was also Rogan. a dental hygienist. Yeah. So that not only did they give her 65 micrograms of mercury in the Rogam shot, which I think mm -hmm. is what it is, but then, you more, know, they more. They, oh, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, and being twins and vaccinated and just that whole route they took. But yeah, that's, so that's, and yeah, but it was funny story. because, and if you know our story, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that more again, we, we ended up with twins and um, through a tragic, a tragedy and, um, which changed our life. And I, I really want to bring that up, but um, the boy was vaccine damaged around four, but there were signs of when he was vaccinated earlier that we saw, and we were trying to convince his parents not to vaccinate Dylan and uh, another one. Even before I, he was born. Yeah, actually. well, yeah, exactly. But then that went on. I, I had dad convinced at one point that of course other family members, they ended up vaccinating, but sent him over the edge on the autism spectrum. And, um, you know, so, Fast forward, we end up with both of those children because their parents tragically died. And Dylan, I just started applying what we're, we learn here, what we talk, teach on this subject uh, or on this show all the time to Dylan. And Dylan's an, uh, an amazing child to this day. He's 19 years old and you'd never know anything never went know. wrong. Uh, he's a little uh, uh, shyest of our children. But Olivia, and this is to my point, Olivia was always the fine one, the fine one. Now, all of a sudden, she gets to be a teenager one of these transitions, right? And she starts getting sensory issues. I mean, for taste, for sound, for, and you know, here it comes. And now later here in life, now we're detoxing her, but she was normal all through that time. Mm -hmm. And then later in life, now as all predicted. of a sudden her metal issues start coming out. Yeah. As predicted. Right. So literally, I mean, all of us, all seven of us have been 
through these protocols. Maybe That's not amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, 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 yeah right, right, right. You know, I mean, now Simon's, you know, on the diet, our 11 year old who basically was raised in the most stressful time of our life. And uh, we'll get there in a second. But, you know, when I, when I say that these protocols, cellular healing, so the deals were born, you know, out of pain and, you know, with great purpose, I <laughs> just even saying this right now, I, I cannot believe that we had to literally, heal, you know, take our every one of our children and ourselves through this process. My my eyes, my wife's eyes are <laughs> welling up because it is it is an, was a very emotional journey. So I can't remember where we were on that subject. Before we were talking about Daniel. Yet. So Daniel. Okay. So was, yeah, Daniel. So anyway, Daniel's not. Yeah, he he's he's, he's amazing now. But it, the point is, is lead came out during that time, and yeah, uh, you know, it's a process, and you know, pulling it out. And, and I, I have to say, folks, again, it's a pet peeve of mine because heavy metal detox. Any detox has to be done correctly. It's not about taking Corella. It's not about taking cilantro. It's not about these things. You have when you talk to scientists, they understand that you know real detox. You have to upregulate cell function. That's key. I mean, that's where it starts. You have to go upstream to the cellular level. People do colon cleanse or this cleanse, that juice cleanse. You know, all of it's downstream. Nothing's wrong with any of that, but it's downstream. You have to get up to the cell, and that's really where it starts. And then, Utilizing true binders that are strong enough to grab onto a heavy metal and escort it out of the body You know, that's another part read the article true cellular detox. I don't have time to get into that But uh, you know, this was learned. I think you'll appreciate the article more that information was learned through this You know, mm -hmm. no, no doubt through this. So Let's fast <laughs> we'll forward. We'll tell you right? what not to do too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know part of our story and I, I said it last night to someone or they said it to me They said, you know if you all didn't go through this, you would never, ever be able to carry this torch, to carry this mission. Dr. Pomba, he said, you would not be the same person. And he's so right. And we were actually discussing even some other things. And, you know, when we inherited the twins, life changed dramatically. And I, and I won't get into the details of this exact story, but um, I just had gotten, you know, on the tail side of myself getting better. Very excited about that. And it wasn't uh, long after that, maybe a two weeks, that we got a phone call that I was like saying, oh my gosh, I'm on the other side of this thing and I'm so you know, excited. Can't wait to ride my bike. Can't yeah, wait, can't to wait to have to do this, a normal you know. life again. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the we got the phone call that um, Lisa, her cousin and, and best friends growing up, um, her husband shot her and then he shot himself. And that's the tragedy that ended up with two seven-year-olds, boy and a girl, one vaccine damaged on the autism spectrum in our home. So you can imagine, and we just had Simon six weeks before that. So we went from two kids to five in about six weeks. So imagine, and, and by the way, I was still, I was in my multi chemically sensitive mode. So I still wasn't myself. I mean, I was better. The fatigue was gone. I could sleep through most of my nights. However, I was still chemically sensitive and trying to figure that out. I mean, I'm allergic to the world. It was still horrific. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you know, then we get these we, these kids in our home. I, that alone is enough to floor most people because we had this massive disruption in our family. Uh, and well, maybe the curse of it all was the fact that you know there was a trust, there was some money left over from the insurance, etc. And um, that became uh, the uh, the biggest. <laughs> I don't even know what to call nemesis. It. Nemesis, yeah. <laughs> Because the, the grandmother of the kids basically said, and it really even wasn't about the money. It was more about control. If you take these kids, then you know, you're know you going to basically regret it, and you're going to spend your life in court. I mean, that's basically, that was she the email. Warned, we still have that us. email, right? Mm -hmm. We still have that email. And, uh, you know, her background. Well, she so, actually warned. That was a warning, I think, over the phone. But then later, it as things have, it came yeah. in an email, she reminded right. us of what she was intending to yeah, do yeah and she had spent 40 this was, some, my, this was my aunt by the way yeah. like this is my aunt but she was never stable no and, and she spent her you know she had her life in wills and trusts in the legal department as a paralegal so she knew what to do she's anyway a, so a smart woman. she basically they came after us with just uh massive legalities and at one point it said the headline said chiropractor steals from orphans and that's when we lost everything i lost my practice i lost Everything. Well, it was so clear to me because when Danny got sick, I, I, I mean, when he got sick, he got so sick. It wasn't, I mean, the bottom fell out. Our life was 
completely in a night different than it was the day before. And I remember saying like, what is going on? I mean, he was never even sick. And I remember, I remember God like just spoke to my heart and said to me, you know, your husband's going to get well and he is going to take a message to the world. And that was it. That was, that was it. I was anchored in that. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to wonder any, I mean, there was just no insecurity in that, but that was obviously why I was so capable of encouraging him because I just knew that God had it. And so then when this happened, which was just inconceivable to who we were to be accused of things that were, I mean, it was just, yeah, it was, you know, I think the worst part about it was, is that we took, you know, we had advisors from the, the, the people who actually held right. The trust. We weren't making decisions. We were, they were, we were putting that money into our bank account and my money, right? That we are, and we were just spending it as a family, and then that ended up to be the really the thing that made us guilty, right? And um, because you we did, couldn't track every dollar spent on those particular kids, we'd adopted the kids. They were our family, and we were just living life as a family. As you know, that is one. why we adopted them to be a family. Yeah, so they had right. security, knowing that they were wanted, right? Yeah, so that I mean, wanted. unknowingly. That's not what we should have done. Well, actually, in, I, where it was being held in Florida, because that's where they lived at the time, that's fine to do, and that's where the advice is. And stupidly, we moved the trust to Pennsylvania, and there's a lot of different differences, and that was... And the bank wanted that. They yeah, actually wanted they us. They want and us to do that. You no, know, we look back, and you, you know, you you live in hindsight. You live in... I mean, and again... Yeah, what, I mean, we, we should have looked into it. I mean, it's just the way we were... You know, we were in survival. Yeah. He was sick. We had little kids. We had two traumatized kids. I, I literally, I look back and I, I spent my life driving Dylan to vision therapy. I taking Olivia to counseling, just, you know, obviously running around the grocery store wasn't close. I mean, just doing all the things that you have to do as an, as a young mom, but a young mom of five and then trying to, you know, make these two kids part of, of our existing life and realizing within that that nothing's ever going to be the same you know so i still lived my life from a position of of my expectation and and that was the hardest thing to let go of and it and it literally took me a decade <laughs> to realize that this life wasn't going to work out the way i well, expected one of the one of my prayers is that the kids were going we were allowing them to go to the grandmothers for every other weekend and different things like that. It was their grandma. A lot. And, and God really put it on my heart not to, that was their only really person that connected them to their Absolutely. past life. So I just said, I don't ever want them to, you know, hold that against me. So I let them go. But what we didn't know is she was feeding into them that they're trying to kill you. And literally, I mean, this was the things that were said. And they, as they grew up, they told us these things later, you know, so they knew, you know, it's looking back that, wow, that was wicked and wrong. You know, but they would come into our house and it would be this massive separation. My prayer, God, remember when God, God spoke to me, I mean, not like <laughs> spoke to me this way, but in my heart, clear three things that he was going to restore. One of which was a united family because I'd never, felt, we never felt like we were in our home. It was just this separation. And I can tell you, God is, is amazing. I, I, our family today is absolutely amazing. And this, this twins are amazing. And, you know, but. You know, we mm -hmm. still are living, you know, in that stress. I mean, honestly, for so many years, just this, you know, through the court system, lost everything. And, you know, most importantly, my father raised me. Your reputation is everything. Your reputation is everything. I lost my reputation. I mean, what's worse than stealing from orphans? It said chiropractor steals from orphans. Practically nothing, right? Isn't there a saying? He's so bad, he steals from orphans. And we never got to tell our side of the story, you know. We never got to tell us, like, yeah, we were just spending it as a family. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we were doing. Um, but that made us, us guilty. So we had to settle. And, you know, I mean, this is, it has been a, just an absolute stressor. <laughs> stressor coming through. But to take this story full circle, um, it's... Uh, it's it, made us who we are. Exactly. It, it has. It's made us who we are. I, I know that I would never have been strong enough, ever you know, to carry what God has for us, you know, with this mission. So through the sicknesses, through the challenge, and then through that vicious attack on our family. And, you know, God has raised us up. Well, we, we <laughs> knew, you know, we, up. when this, Danny could not walk away from his patients. I mean, his, his practice and 
taking care of those because that's his heart is to care for people. Uh, he just couldn't leave it. And I kept saying to him, so we didn't lose a patient. I mean, our, our patients know who he is. Yeah. Through but, that, through the headlines, through all right. this stuff, because they, she brought, she was on every radio show. Well, she was interviewed on television. Like this is what they did. And it's like in, you know, our attorneys are going, don't say a word, don't say a word, which we never did. You know, did. it's like, yeah. Sometimes uh, you This wonder is probably the most we've ever said even publicly, you know, but it was just horrific. Just sitting there going, ah. Uh, but, but I knew that if God wanted his practice in Wexford to stay in business, then he would have brought what was needed in order to make that happen. And, and it was so clear it was not happening. And I kept saying to him, when are you going to let it go? When are you going to let it go? I mean, I, I hate saying it's only money, you know, because that sounds like it's not a value. It's not like that. It's just that what he suffered for, what we had gone through as a family, what we had taken on with good intention and had spun to, to a different angle of something that we didn't even like the people that were talked about in that those newspaper articles. Oh my it, gosh, it was I, I read the article, I'm like, oh my God. People still would be like, oh, you still have the kids? It's because oh they said the kids were taken from. It was just, oh, it was, you, you the learned. media spun it so dramatic. And I'm going, oh. you know, like what? We were just blindsided, you know? And we never, like I said, we never did get to tell the story. So, it, let me just make that point is we just settled. And by the way, when it all started, I just said, well, you know, if they, let's just, pay every draw back, you know, whether we ever use for our family, which is crazy because we were supposed to use it. But anyway, that was my solution. And guess what happened in the end after, you know, all the legal stuff, the battle, the, just the head, it, we ended up just paying it all back. I mean, like, gosh, I mean, Still yeah. Not, yeah, that, but, that, yeah, right. so we, so in it all, um, you know, you finally knew that, Yep, this it's I there's nothing I can do. I have to close the doors. And and they were actually closed for us. So Yeah, so the practice, right. I I, I literally thought it was four. God knew. He called me to something and I was fighting it. And her and Warren were, you know, and I just wouldn't let go. I had to let go. So I, I've said this in past shows, you know, when God has something better for you, oftentimes we're hanging on to something in the past. And don't hang on, folks. Because if I would have listened, I know that things would have been different. God utilized, he allows things to happen in our life. And that was the leverage that he allowed to get me to where he wanted to go and, and force me out of practice. I, you know, I, I, <laughs> you know, see people that are sick and challenged from all over the world virtually now. And I wouldn't be doing that if I wasn't pride out of practice. I wouldn't be teaching this message. I wouldn't be. So. And for those of you that, you know, were his patients and supported us, you have no idea how much it means to to both of us because you know it's you know it's we can put a smile on our face because we have incredible faith and we know God is with us but there you're still human you still have to experience the emotion of being attacked of being falsely mis of falsely represented totally misrepresented it couldn't have been further from who we are and and that is that is the hardest that is the hardest thing. We and thought the sicknesses were hard, but this was hard different. Different yeah. hard. And yeah. and now though, you know, obviously again, God did use what he he allowed it. It went through his hand for his purpose. Yeah. And so we said early on we are going to become better and not bitter. You know, I have I forgive my aunt. I I I feel terrible for that the pain that she must have within her to try to seek out and destroy the lives of others, especially when she knew from the start that when she threatened those things, I said, this is not a, a battle with me. This is a battle for you with God. You know, I'm sorry for what you're going through, but I've been called to this. There was not a doubt in my mind that, I mean, Lisa, my very best friend, she was, I, I even said it in something I wrote the other day on my blog about Olivia's oh, graduation. Give your blog. Yeah. That, you know, there, I was, ne I never felt myself more in a friendship than in the one I had with her. I mean, she, I, by the way, she's the one that the, the parents willed us the children. I mean, so it wasn't like we took the children. Uh, there was, yeah, there was no uh, doubt. It was know, a conversation. The, the grandmother said that wasn't true. It was, a, but it, it was and, in the will. It was in the will. And so we, you have to, you know, you, you learn in life mm -hmm. and you learn in your faith that it isn't about, it isn't about what other people do to you. 
or what happens in your life and the circumstances that you have to go through. It is about what, how you interpret and how you respond to those things that matters the most. So sometimes I wish we had had more opportunities to talk and people really knew because it's really hard when you plea something out to say you have to accept certain things and that's really painful. But you also realize, you know what, this is, this is an opportunity for God to be God. And, and he is the one that we trust. You know, when Marilyn, we obviously they, you know, we were in the will to have the kids if anything had happened. And it was a year before that tragedy happened that we agreed to that, ironically enough. Um, I mean, just, I mean, even that insurance policy, dang it, I wish that didn't go through, right? It's like it was one year, one week or something like that. One week that it, the insurance policy, that, they, that would have happened a week sooner that it wouldn't have been there, right? It's like, gosh, life would be a lot easier, you know, if we didn't ever have any of that, you know, and we just still had the kids, obviously. But, you know, Marilee just knew in her heart that taking these kids was going to create disruption, and, and I intuitively knew it too. But Marilee was like, nope, this is, Lisa wanted this, we're going to do this. I, and, just, I always said, I don't need swallowed by the whale. Yeah. You know, God, God knew that yeah. in his sovereignty, and he provided. And uh, Absolutely. Well, look, I mean, it, it is, it's that. And, you know, I actually, in one of the past shows, I, I thought the idea of uh, at Christmas or sometime when we're all here, I'm going to bring all seven of us together, seven, maybe eight or nine, two, mm -hmm. these little puppies. But um, we're going to bring us all together, and you'll see the outcome of a horrific struggle. Um, and, you know, through sickness, all of us, uh, through that horrific separation that Satan was working to destroy a family. You know, he destroyed, you know, that family originally. God allowed it for whatever reason, and he was after us, and he didn't allow so it. So those are stressors that affected my lead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? Those those very stressors that that affected me hormonally drove me to get to the root cause. You know, it wasn't enough just to detox the lead. It wasn't enough to, and obviously continuing to do so. It wasn't, I had to also get to the root of the emotion and I'm, and I'm still invested in that process. But the, the difference when we finally moved and came here, I immediately, everything just kind of came to uh, a head. It was, it was post traumatic stress yeah, is what it, it was. actually she was. She went through post, she even had an ulcer. I mean, she went through this, it was just this whole post traumatic stress and, but it put her into counseling. <clears throat> and that was then here comes the emotional detox yep you know and uh, that was next so you know from from pain to purpose give them your blog because well I, I haven't written in a while but I kind of started writing in that blog I think shortly after a lot of this stuff started well, happening. Put it this way you're releasing soon just announce what what's coming so um, well so so my existing blog which is really kind of just personal and meant to encourage others without being too specific um, is from pain to purpose and then my other blog that I just released and it's it, I haven't worked on it in a few weeks But that is called if the shoe fits so that's more of the topics of, of our daily life and the things that we're passionate about and as well as enjoy about life and and just kind of I For those of you on my Facebook or that I'm on yours You know that I'm super into my freedom and being politically incorrect and all the things that matter about my wife stands for <laughs> truth when you've been as a, through the much adversity that we have well God know, is real yeah. and he has no he has just you know shown us it's it's not always about the circumstances it's about the purpose and he'll take care of the circumstances and and it's hard it's but it's incredibly it's it's incredibly a purpose-filled life there's just no question so I that is my thing, is, is being able to share maybe to a, a greater audience what I have personally journeyed through and what I've learned in that. And again, I don't know. <laughs> Put her down. I don't know. Um, She's distracting. You know, I'm, if, it, Matt, if it's something that's of interest, then great. And if it's not, I just feel like I spend a lot of time investing in Facebook. I should create this archive well, yeah, effort well, somewhere My wife else. has a, a lot to say. I mean, we're going to be having a, 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 in a good way. I mean, we're going to be talking about uh, flu shots, uh, one of the coming up episodes, yeah. you know, this time of year. And, oh, my gosh, she's so passionate about the vaccines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she did birth our three natural babies at home. And, and let, let me tell you something. Through this whole per stress, uh, everything we've been through, we can't say we were perfect. You know, when I was sick, you know, I was, mm -hmm. you know, asking the wrong questions, you know, and, 
you learn in it, but it allows me to coach people. And, you know, neither of us were perfect in any of this process, were we? <laughs> so, no. so those that are out there that are in your own battle and going, oh, if I could just be like them. Look, no. <laughs> yeah, would, if you'd see some of our videos, right? Meaning like if the camera was on, you'd be like, you know, how are we here now? So you don't have to be purpose in it. And I just read this the other day. You know, if we just simply get better when we hit these adversities of just asking, okay, God, first of all, thank you because you must want to teach me something in it. What is it, Lord, that you want to teach me? But thank you for allowing me to be here. And, and, I, and I say that because I didn't always do that. I had to learn it through this process of pain, you know? And it's like now I, I know we respond differently to stress. And, you know, and Lord, don't bring any more. You know, it's like, but, you know, <laughs> but so again, I, I mean, to bring this in full circle is, is you know, we are who we are. And uh, to be this candid and, you know, gosh, I would look back and do everything different with the, the trust, with the kids, this, that, that, but it's who we are. It's, it's what we needed to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are. So you'll get the whole family sometimes. So. Oh, yeah. We're, gonna, we're going to do a show of what it was yeah. like growing up with Dr. Pompa. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So you'll hear the stories, my kids, right? It's <laughs> like, uh, well, yeah, you already do this and you didn't do this with Simon, the 11 year. Anyways, that's the future show. So, you know. Thank you for standing with us, right? I mean, oh my gosh, thank you so much. We love every thank one you. of you. We love your emails. And listen, I try to call all of you back. I do. And it's like, and if I don't get to you, please don't be offended. I, you know, we are very busy people. We work till late at night and, and it's like, and I feel like I let someone down if I don't get back to a call with them and I feel called to you and I wish I could help every one of you. I do. And, but the only way I can't help you is because of this pain that you just heard. So that's where I always say that's my authority. And I learned that in Africa from a, a people that hurt more than anybody. And mm -hmm. they said, no, Dr. Pampa, you know, your authority is in the victory that God gives you mm -hmm. and how true that is. So thank you so much for watching this show and Thank you so much for reading my articles and, you know, and being with us. And praying for us. And praying for us as a family. We know we have something to take to the world. So Absolutely. thank you.